you mentioned the beta alanine and um I don't know if sodium bicarbonate's in there, but beta alanine I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sort of interested in. I've never really heard of it until I heard you talk about it. I didn't know anything about the fatigue buffers, oh, yeah. or what what it's doing. So how does it work? Tell, tell us a little bit about it. It's been around for a really long time. Really simple strategy with this one. So enzymes work in a certain pH range, right? If you come too acidic inside of a muscle, we have a hard time running any metabolic process. Aerobic, anaerobic, strength, it doesn't really matter, right? Contracting muscle power. We start running into acidic environment. We start running into problems. So enter then a whole cascade of supplements designed to buffer fatigue, which is a way to say like, let's keep you within that acidic range. Now you can do this by starting off more alkaline, or you can just do this by putting intermediaries in there that say like, we're just going to keep you within that certain range so you don't get too high. Now, beta alanine was a great stop on that because we're looking at intracellular carnosine. That's what we're trying to do, right? So he's like saying, hey, this is our limiting factor, beta alanine being the amino acid, the limiting factor. So if we can give you more of that, you can build up more carnosine, then we can buffer more effectively. And it works. There's a good amount of research on it. It worked for the things that you would anticipate it working for. Doesn't do much for maximal strength. Doesn't do much for speed or power. Doesn't do a lot for long duration endurance. Um, Though, again, you can see some positive benefits there. Where it mostly works are things of really high intensity. And by that, I mean um, cardiovascular intensity, Mm -hmm. right? So high intensity of strength training, again, I just said not super relevant because you're doing two reps. Acidic is not the problem there. So beta alanine is something that you would take chronically. You will feel an acute effect, um, certainly at somewhat of a higher dose, but you need three to five weeks for this to build up intracellularly before it makes a difference. And so much like caffeine or creatine, rather, unlike caffeine, this takes a while for you to dose it. Um, So you can, you can do a bunch of things to mitigate that, um, but you will see a, a pretty classic, uh, like CrossFit would be a great example. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't, basically couldn't engineer a a supplement better for acute or, or for, for CrossFit performance um, outside of beta alanine. And as I mentioned, it's been around a really long time. It's just an amino acid. It's not a stimulant. It won't affect energy. You you could take it right now. And again, like you wouldn't notice, you wouldn't be like, Oh, I'm fired up and ready to go. You wouldn't feel anything different. Um, but you would just feel the burn is not as bad, uh, as your training. What, what would be the optimal dose? Um, man, I'm blanking on doses right now, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, so we can look that up. But I, I did read that there's some kind of tingling effect. Oh, oh now, yeah, yeah. So can you can you mitigate that by? Yeah. Back in the day, uh, we would say like this is an iacine dump. But that doesn't seem to be the case. There's there actually a couple of papers that came out. It seems to be something to do with sensory input. So there there's some sort of sensory receptors that are being clicked on and tingled. And it kind of feels like a fire. It feels like you're itching. It feels like you rolled around in grass mm. a bunch, right? Uh don't tell anybody this. We would we would give people beta alanine a bunch, like our friends, as a joke, and they're like not paying attention. So you like put some like we, we were younger, and so you're like sitting there doing work, or whatever. And all of a sudden, you just like start itching everywhere. And you're like, what the? F-? <laughs> we would do this a bunch. I did this to my wife one time actually, and she was like, like, what is going on? She's like, something's like, yeah, you can't. But that's like a higher dose, right? Not so- even like a moderate dose. You'll feel that out. Really? Yeah, yeah. Can you just can you? Take It'll desensitize it- super fast. It'll oh, be so it's really like not something you're going to continue feeling no. once you... You can also just back dosage down. Like you just go down a tiny bit and you'll find that level of like, okay, I feel fine. And as soon as you start training, it typically goes away. So 30, 45 minutes before or so, you take it, you'll start feeling those like itchy kind of crawly feels a little bit. So generally, as soon as you start training, it goes away. Um, if that's still bothering you, just lower the dosage. What we'll do a lot of the times because it's not an acute stimulant is we'll just split the dosage up throughout the day. Half in the morning, half a night. A couple grams in the morning, a couple grams at night. Like that, that is a general place it will go. Um, so like if the four grams is like killing you or you don't like it or three is better, then again, split them up throughout the day and they won't have any effect. So we will do that. Um, you will develop a little bit of a, um, a tolerance to that though. So this is one of the cases where you, we actually want to build that dose over time. So when we get within like eight weeks of competition, we will start strategically increasing that dosage to get that as high as we possibly can. Uh, where other things, we don't have to worry about dosage going up. Well, should you, is it like a cycling kind of thing where you we w- cycle it? You don't have to cycle it because there's no feedback loop here. It's just an amino acid. Okay. So there's no, um, like creatine, like there's no 
you're not shutting down any endogenous process by doing it, but we will tend to to bring it away just for, a, if we don't have a particular purpose of supplements, we don't take them. It's like for that purpose alone, we're like, okay, great. We finished, we competed, we did something. We're pulling it back down. So for the people who are not in competitive sports, we will tend to just use it when we have a bigger priority or we're training really hard. And so we use it in six to 10 weeks. And then if you want to like come off of it, but you don't have to cycle it. We have some people that are on it permanently and they just don't come off of it. I haven't seen anything to suggest that you need to pull it away if you don't want. And it's pretty safe. You said it's been been well studied. and Super well studied. Um, I haven't seen... Outside of the acute tingling, I can't say I've seen any like side effects that have been documented that are a problem. So again, it's amino acids. It's like pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, any other supplements? Well, you mentioned are... um, uh, quickly, I think it's probably worth sodium bicarbonate. Yeah. Okay. S- same idea, different mechanism, but same idea as beta alanine. So sodium bicarbonate, you're making yourself more alkaline, right? That's all you're doing. So if you want, if you don't like beta alanine or don't want to use it or something like that, you can go the sodium bicarbonate route. That is, like, you can get that at the cheapest price possible, baking soda, right? You can literally do that. We have done that many, many, many times. Just take baking soda and put it in water and drink it. Way, again, many, many years ago, <laughs> it's a little bit off color, but um, when, when we would have to run these studies with sodium bicarbonate, we would have to do it really close to the toilet because this will have a very pronounced acute GI effect on you. And so like there was many times of wheeling over carts when you have like an IV in somebody or something, you're like, get them over to the toilet. Not a good situation. So because of that, most people have modified the delivery mechanisms of sodium bicarbonate, but it does work pretty well. If you're concerned about that, you're like, that is the least appealing thing I've ever heard in a podcast in my life. You can just use creams. Um, Momentus makes PR lotion. That's exactly what PR lotion is. It's just a sodium bicarbonate cream. So this is local. So if you're using your, your arms today, you can put it on your arms and it has nothing that you don't have to put it through your GI tract at all. You can put it on your quad or whatever you're doing. Um, so that is the best workaround. For and that, uh, that improves your, your high intensity performance. Yeah. Sodium. Putting... You're also, you're putting sodium directly intracellular as well as it'll get into, um, it'll get into blood flow. But does, this doesn't have to, this doesn't take weeks like beta alanine. It's an acute effect. Yep. So you rub it on right before, you take it right before 30 to 60 minutes before training would be uh, what you're looking for. It takes some time to get in and get into tissue. But yeah, this is an acute effect. And this is definitely something I would generally only use on training days. Where beta alanine you could take and probably should take on non-training days because it takes a while for that to storage to come up. Uh, creatine, same thing. If you're going to use a sodium bicarbonate or equivalent, this is only like a pre-workout strategy. 